family into. Mm. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul.
strength, God. Point your hands this way. This is a hard thing. A day before Mother's Day. I need you praying. I need you rejoicing. Don't sit there and look at me like that. I need some intercessors. Strength, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Grace, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Your strength. Your hands. Your grace. Your power. Send it, Lord. Holy Ghost. Oh, comfort of God. I speak over this family. Do it, Jesus. Oh, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Lord. Only you can. incredible praise this is a hard place for this family a day before Mother's Day to have to bury mom and I want those of you who can and will today to make sure that you are strength and encouragement for this family are we a sanctified church or what we understand death it never comes easy and you never get used to it. But one thing about it, we still owe God praise, even in the midst of this. Can I get an amen in here? This is a reminder that all of us got to do the same thing. And we ought to praise him every day like it is the last day. Amen. Certainly we want to honor the angels of this house. Uh, Bishop Mosley, who had an unforeseen situation. We certainly do honor him, a great man of God in his own right. That's right. A great man of God. Thank him for the support of this family. And certainly the leading lady of this house is here. And we honor her. What a beautiful spirit, a beautiful woman of God. Such a gracious woman. Thank God for her and all of these great preachers and pastors. The Ecclesia, 
all of these great men and women of God in the house and certainly we honor Mother Tucker and all of these beautiful mothers. We ought to thank God for the mothers. Amen. And certainly my husband in his absence and to uh, Bishop Payton who's going to be the eulogist for today and again to this family. We are praying for you all day long. Amen. Listen, the family has outlined the program and we are going to govern ourselves according to the standards of what they have established. Am I talking good? So we're going to ask Pastor Dennis Martin to come with our invocation, the Old Testament scripture reading, Elder Randolph Austin, the choral response, hallelujah, is going to be rendered, New Testament scripture reading, Elder David Talbert, and then a musical selection by the Celebration Choir. We would go in that order, and you can come one behind the other. Amen. Lord bless you. I'm going to ask everyone to stand but the family. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we give your name glory, honor, and praise. We thank you because we recognize that this is the day that you've made. And we've come for no other purpose than to rejoice and to be glad. Your word declares in all things to give thanks. And God, even in this, we say thank you. God, we're here to thank you today for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We thank you for Mother Crom. We thank you for her life. We thank you, God, for her journey. We thank you for the lives that she's touched. We thank you for the hearts, God, that have been turned because of the wisdom of her words. And God, even as she has swapped time for eternity, we thank you, God, that you would strengthen us that remain. We pray that you would give strength today and comfort to this family. We pray that you would touch them, hold them, sustain them, hold them up in your right hand. Let them feel your comfort. Let them feel your strength and joy. We thank you right now hey, that the plan of the enemy has been defeated. And God, even this close to Mother's Day, God, you're the one that can give strength. You're the one that can give comfort. And God, I pray that you touch now, not only physically, but I pray that you touch mentally and even emotionally. I pray that you do it now. God, we give you glory and we give you praise for this. God, but we thank you that even today we trust her into the hands of a God that never makes a mistake. God, you know what you're doing, and we thank you for it. And even now, hey, God, we lift our hands. And even now, we glorify you. Even now, we open our mouths, and we say glory. We thank you. We give you praise, and we honor you. Thank you right now for covering us. Thank you right now for touching us. Thank you right now for the blood. Oh, hey, Shabbat. We plead the blood, the blood cover now, the blood touch us now. We pray that you bless this service. God bless every participant, bless the word. Let your glory be revealed. Save somebody today, deliver somebody today, heal somebody today. Let it be a celebration that we can look back on and say, did not the glory of the Lord be revealed? And we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your hand. We thank you and we give you praise. In this, we praise you. Now I want everybody, clap your hands and open your mouth and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. In this, we praise you. In this, we thank you. In this, we glorify you. Hallelujah. And God, we bless you, and we thank you that it is so. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen.
Psalms 1, 16, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Corinthians 15, the 50th verse through the 57th verse. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord.
remember. Remember how I raised you. Press on. Press in. Trust God. Stretch out. His word will never fail you. Oh. Stretch out. Stretch out. Oh. Let the word do the word. sustain us. Can I get a witness? How many of you know the power and of the word of God is our sustaining force? I'm going to go on because you know we can get hung up right there. And I'm not the preacher, not today. But I tell you one thing, I'm living off the word of God. And I believe that God is going to keep this family through his word. Now, the family, again, have given us instruction, and I just received another amendment to the agenda, and I want to say to y'all, now, all, most of us, a lot of us in here know how to testify and preach, 
And y'all know when we get this microphone and it's hot, and if the saints say two amens, we know how to continue. But this is not going to be this kind of party today. Here's what I need you to do, baby. I need you to say your remarks, because mother have left a legacy, and there's so much we all could say about her. But you can't tell it all today. So when I call you, I want you to come on up. But now here's what I want you to be clear about. If you see me stand up and the music start to play softly, that is your clue. Am I talking good? We all want a chord, okay? All right, I understand the family wants uh, Mother Robinson, Mother Annie Robinson, who's a friend of Mother Crumb of Chicago, Illinois, to come. And I, God knows I don't want to rebuke no mother. God knows that's not my training. But I know we're going to do what is asked of us. And then mother, the Peyton family, to my understanding, is going to come together. And then the Jones Avenue uh, crew is going to come together. Okay? That's, 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 that's my note that I have here. And everybody have two minutes. Okay? Thank you so much for governing. Thank Let's you, thank you. Yes, I know how to obey. Yes, ma'am, I know you. Aye, oh, he shaking in a heart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I glory. Thank you, Jesus. She started already. <laughs> Amen. I thank God for the family. Thank yes, God for the household of faith. Yes, thank yes, God yes, for the pastor. Yes, and especially I have an MC on today. Mama Crumb been there for everybody. As my children say and my grandchildren, she been there for everybody. Yes, Lord. And this is to my sister. I'm thanking you for being my looking glass. I will tell you because you, I love you because I am your looking glass. Annie, I will tell you when you're wrong, and I will tell you when you're right. I tell you the truth, and I won't let you pass. First, I will be your looking glass. Then, I will chastise your children. I will show them the end and until the future. Will you be my looking glass, Mama Crumb, and help me stay on the right path? Will you pray and will you fast to help me last and my family? Then I'll let you tell me again, and I'll love you forever because you are my looking glass. I love you all. God bless everybody. And if you got somebody in your life that's your looking glass, you're going to make it to heaven. Thank you. Quick amendment, um, Deacon Donald Payton uh, is later on in the uh, program. However, he's going to speak on behalf of the Peyton family and the rest will govern. The next we will have is the Jones Avenue crew. I don't know if you're going to have a representative there, but we will. you will move forward. You can move towards the side there. As soon as you finish, you jump right in. Sister Nancy Reese Hall will be coming with a tribute from the Jones Avenue. Just a few of us left. God bless you. We are here to represent just a small, small portion of the Jones Avenue crew. And we have a tribute and it's entitled, Goodbye World, I'm Home Now. That was a judge order, special delivery to Mother Crumbs. She could not ignore or return back to a sender 
Instead, she was told to total surrender. No one could take her place. The judge had already granted her grace. And it read, you are to prepare and be ready on the 27th of May. Be prepared for your lifetime extended stay. Be reassured everything will be okay. Trust me and just obey. For months now, your long white robe was being made. Wanted it to fit well in spite of you not feeling well. Your crown has many pearls, emeralds, diamonds. All of the angels are patiently waiting. The choir received an email to start rehearsing. Maurice Culpepper, Rance Allen, Tex Andre Crouch. They inboxed Edwin and Walter Hawkins. They were singing, Oh Happy Day. Maddie Moss Clark, FaceTime, Limbra Hagens, the runners and Sean Pace to lead Oh How I Love Jesus with James Moore. Pastor Jonathan Greer came from the rear singing, You Are Receiving Showers of Blessings. Then Bishop George Briley, Ella Talley, Ella Payton, Fletcher, Bishop Dale looked so well. Way back there, that love, uh, there was a loud sound, dancing and rejoicing. After he finally met and greeted Dr. Martin Luther King, he was so excited. He couldn't sing, but he played his baby tamarine, the happy preacher. Say that, say that. There were so many former Jones Avenue members cheering in the great cloud of witnessing section. Bishop Gilbert Patterson, Bishop J.O. Patterson, was most proud to see another Church of God in Christ member had made it in, rebuked sickness and death. And now she has finally victory. The victory from 591 Jones Avenue. She has won to 1170 to 1137, now resting in heaven. The prayer warriors were still on their posts. Mother Susie Holloman, Mother Furbush, Mother Cherry, Mother Adams, Walker, and Watley. The Mothers of Zion was also waiting. Mother Canyon, Russell, Benton, Zelna, Smith, Reese, Bell, Wilcoxon. <laughs> Former Moore, Wyatt, Fennessy, Trice, Scarborough, and Frazier. Come over here where the table is spread. I have a crown of glory on my head from sickness and from the bed. She was so surprised and happy to finally be reunited with her loved ones, her family, Lamar, Leslie, Tammy, Tibia, Bill, Sydney, knowing that God is able to stand, and there stood her sister, Mabel, and the love of her life, Mr. Tom. He had been waiting 10 years on her to be reunited. I will miss all of the love and dedicated, and she said, before I go, just let me say, I will thank all of my dedicated children, my dependable sisters and brothers. And finally, goodbye world, I'm home now. No hospital, no COVID, COVID free, no funeral homes, and I have a new body. The same judge that came for me will come for you one day. Remain faithful, get your house in order, and know that whether it's morning, noon, or night, it's going to be all right. I'm home now. Saints, we're moving fast. It's Mother Emma Norwood. God bless you. I do honor the Lord today for my salvation, for being saved. Glory. Sanctified, hallelujah, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I do give honor to my bishop, Bishop Mosley. I give honor to First Lady, Mr. Missionary Bullock, and to Sister Dixie. God bless you. And to this family, all I can say is be encouraged. 
be encouraged. I love your mother. I love Mother Carl as my mom. I know the days and the time that we went to Memphis, to all the convocation, she was there. And all she could talk about was her church. All she could talk about was Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She loved us, and I love her. And all I can say is right now, she's absent from the body and present with the Lord. Be encouraged, because one day, as Sister Reese said, that same horn that blew for her, it's going to stop by our way one day. Be ready, be encouraged, and love us. Let me just go back and say, one of my words I use is keep it real. The word of God said we are one body. When you hurt, I hurt. When you cry, I cry. When you're hungry, I'm hungry. We are glued together. We have to love each other. Not just for this time, but for seven days, 24 hours of the day. Be encouraged and love one another as if it's your last day. Bless you, Mother. Blessings to you. And again, we are so very proud of, of Mother Crumb and all that she's done in as long as she served. We're so thankful for that. And, and to speak to how she lives, look at all these great people who came out the day before Mother's Day to celebrate her. And certainly to all of these officials and leaders, come on, Deacon, who came out to support her as well. Go ahead, Deacon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deacon Payton, Donald Payton, and I'm so honored to be able to speak on behalf of my friend and sister in the Lord, Elois Crum, Elois Bynum Crum. I remember her when we were living on the same street, Ezra Church Drive. We grew up there yes. a long time ago, and I'm a friend of her her entire family, the Bynum family, Rudy is still my best friend on today. And um, I remember when I met the Crumb family after Eloise had left and went to Chicago after she had gotten married. And on one of the celebrations that we had in Atlanta, I don't know whether it was a, um, I don't know what kind of celebration it was, but I was there and I met the Crumb family, a beautiful family, wonderful, friendly family. I, I remember uh, Shalina, I had already known Shalina, I had met her before that celebration. Shalina, she doesn't know today how much she favored her mother when her mother was that age. She looked just like her at that particular age. And, I, and what I have to say is, encouraging wise, the song said it best, the first song they were singing, if you know, if, if you, those who know God and his son, Jesus, they have everlasting life. And Sister Crom, she believed in the Lord. She believed in God and the son. So this is not a funeral, everybody. This is a home-going celebration because she knew the Lord. And she was faithful to him. And, I, and I'm not going to speak long time because I want my sister to say something too. But I wanted to just let the family be encouraged by those words. We are human, and therefore we're going to have human factors. We're going to cry. We're going to be sad. We're going to miss them. But in all of that, remember that she's on the way to her permanent home. Because how many more? This is a temporary home where we are right here. And in order to get to that permanent home that God promised to us, we got to pass this way in order to get there. So I encourage you, family, just remember that. Just be strengthened on that. Even with your tears, be strengthened on the fact that your mama has gone to her permanent home that Jesus and God had prepared for her. Amen. And I'm going to let my sister have something to say right quick. I don't want to use all the time. <laughs> let everybody say amen. Let everybody say amen. As uh, Deacon Donna say, this is a celebration. Thanking God, 
She was Mother Crumb, but she was Eloy's big sister to me. My mother thought that she was such a special young woman years ago when we were living on Elzer Church Drive. So she became a, a goddaughter to my mother, the late uh, Mother Geneva Payton. And uh, therefore, she became my guard sister. And Sister e uh, Eloise, she was a lady that did things in an excellent way. She, she believed in perfection, even when it came down to her salvation. And I just want to thank God for her today. And I want to thank God for you, Shalina. You a beautiful daughter. Thank God for you, Mark. You took care of your mom. We would always see, see each other. We ate out a lot of times together. And they were so loving toward their mother. They didn't make her feel like she was a bother, whatever state she was in. So be encouraged. And the thing that, that I heard that, that, that was so beautiful, uh, well, years ago when we were at the old Jones Avenue Church, she used to lead this song called, Lord, own me as your child. And she would, she would, she would get through, uh, halfway through the, the song, and she would get the, get the shouting. But I was told that uh, when she was so sick the last day, that she said, I'm trying, wait, y'all, I'm trying on my long white robe. And then uh, some brightness came on her. But did you, did you see the smile on her face? Did you see that smile on her face? See, see, she, see, see Jesus had said, come on home, child. And she was so happy. She was so happy. And so I can say today, I can only imagine, Lois, you are with your father. You are with Jesus. And I can only imagine. Just ditto to everything that my brother and sister has said. We know about the time. And that's all. I just, Shirlina, we're praying for you and Mark, the entire family. And take it from me. God can hold you. He's still holding me when you were with me four years ago. He can hold you. Everything you need is in him. We appreciate all of the wonderful remarks about Mother. And certainly we do have some more outstanding remarks. Again, to have these kinds of leaders to come and support you speaks well of Mother's character. And we're going to ask the leading lady of the house, um, uh, Lady Sheila Mosley, to come, Mother Lulu Robinson, Mother Mary B. Tucker, and Supervisor Alberta Porter, as well as Bishop Richard, Mr. Clean White, to come and to share. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. What a celebration. We honor God for his goodness to my husband who sends his love, Mark and Shalene and all the family. He's so sorry he could not be here, but he just wasn't feeling well. And you know he must not be feeling well if he's not here. But he told me to make sure that I give you his love. And I thank God for all of these leaders, the bishop, Bishop White, Bishop Payton, to the eulogist for today, Pastor Payton, and to the sons of this church, God bless you, and certainly to the presider and to our mother Tucker and to you, Mother Porter, and just to all of God's children. I'm telling you, Brother Mark, I love you. Sister Shalene, I love you and all the children and sisters and brothers, Mother Fane. Mother Crumb was special to me. And she knew I loved her. And she knew, and she knew that I loved her and that she loved me. So many times we'd come to church and we'd have on the same colors. Didn't even plan it. It would just happen that way. But I don't, know, I don't know the days of old, but I can speak now. Mother was faithful until the end. Mother was faithful. She was faithful, more faithful than some of us that got good help. Mother was here. She would sit right there on that second row, 
And I tell you, one of the sweetest mothers you ever want to meet. And when I tell you, when church got to going good, but oh, whew, the whole church felt that. Hallelujah. She was a sanctified woman. She has gone to be with the Lord. We're going to miss her down here, Brother Mark and Shalita. We're going to miss Mama. But Mother went trade. Mother wouldn't come back. You see that smile on her face as Mother Peyton said, Mother, like Father, here I am. I am ready. And we want you to know that we are praying for you. We are here. We're going to walk with you. This is not the end. Today is not the end, but we are here for you. We love you. Your church family love you. We are here for you. God bless you, and thank you so much. Glory. Yes, yes, yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Mother would say, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Well, we thank God today for each and everybody that's here today and for the family and for Mother Tucker. First, I have a pastor. It did say it already. It's repetition, but I want to say I thank God for everybody. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I thank God for knowing Mother Crohn's. I didn't always know her like y'all know her. Well, and once she came back here, I was sitting on that second seat. And when Mother Crumbs came, she sat on that second seat. And I knew Mother Pops. When I came here, Mother Pops and I was prayer partners. We did shut-in together. We did all these things together, visiting sick together. And so Mother Pops told me Mother Crumbs was her sister. So I got to know Mother Crumbs. She said, Mary don't want to know how to pray. I know how to pray too. And I learned that Mother learned how Crumbs learned how to pray. And I want you to know every time that Mother's got ready to go somewhere, when Mother was able, she was right there. She didn't, make, she didn't have no, she didn't use no excuse, I don't feel well. She persevered anyway. She kept going anyway. Days that she didn't feel like it, some day she'd come in on church on Sunday morning. She'll say, mm, my foot. And I, she, she'll take my hand, she'll, I put my hand on her leg, and she's, oh, thank you, Jesus. But she just persevered. She kept, kept young going. But I want you to know, family, don't forget how mother persevered. Don't forget the love she has for y'all. You know she's gone on to be with the Lord, but she left an inheritance for you. It might not be gold, it might not be silver, and it might not be houses. But she left faith. She left joy. She left peace. She left knowing how to know God with Job. She left telling, she'll let you know, if you, can't, if you don't know the answer, ask God to give you the answer. Because God have the answer for every situation. And God would, and the mother crumbs believe that. I want y'all to keep the faith now and know when God touched her on the shoulder, when the angel, the God sent the angel touched her on the shoulder and told her, well done, 88 years, I started you at 80 years, years ago, and now he said, it's time to come home. So I want y'all to know, be encouraged. Keep looking up. Keep believing. And don't forget the great inheritance she left for y'all, to always love each other. She only not long loved y'all, but she left her friends and her family. I didn't know her very long, but I know her long enough to know she was a woman that believed in God. Y'all pray my strength to God. Each one of you, the house has been addressed, and certainly I did tell that. Give honor to the Lord today. What a joy it is to stand in this celebration for such a great, kind woman of God. Mother Crown will be remembered in my mind as a sweet, elegant, soft spoken woman well-dressed, always kind, not wearing what she was going through on her face. I appreciate that. It's te she, her legacy is a legacy for me to know how to be as I move into that old age. Amen? People tell me, don't say you're old. I said, the Bible says, 
three score and 10, and if by reason of strength, four score. So what does that mean? I thank God for Mother Crumb, for her family, for all that she has been. A great example to the women of God, not old and mean, not old and crabby. You know, some of the saints, now come on, some of the saints are mean. But Mother Crumb was sweet. Family, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me that where I, I go to prepare a place for you and where I go, she's going to come. She's, she's coming. She's there. Amen. So I reckon that the suffering that Mother Crom went through in this present day is not worthy to be compared to the joy that she has Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God, praise God. We do give honor to the Lord today, to the bishops, to all of our singers, to the pastors, and to all of you. I do honor and praise the Lord for his goodness today. And what can you say about the Crumb family? Amen. I honor and praise the Lord because we're standing for Southern Illinois Jew Ecclesiastics Jurisdiction. Amen where our bishop is Bishop e Emerald Patterson, amen. And I thank and praise the Lord for the family that has come through the Southern Illinois family, amen. We are still a big happy family, amen. When you see one, you see all of us, amen. And I just honor and praise the Lord for Ricky, Selena, Mark, and for, don't let me start naming because I th and, and praise the Lord for all Heath, Amen. I am part of this family because my my nephew is the nephew is the nephew the of uh, the grandson of Mother Crumb. Amen. And how you have come in and has taken care of your mother. Amen. We honor and praise the Lord for you. What you have done for her. Amen. So many people have just, you know, given them up for the caretakers, but we're thanking God for these caretakers has come in and taken care of their mother, amen, the way they have. And we do honor and praise the Lord for what you have done for Mother Crumb. Like everybody has said, such a sweet lady, amen. I just thank God for her. I thank God because usually my husband is the uh, director for the nurses unit in the national, and whenever he see Mother Crumb coming through the, to the temple, amen, for the convocations, he says, Mother Crumb always have a place in, in this, uh, up here in front with me. And I thank God for what we have come through with the Crumb family, amen, and with Southern Illinois. We do honor and we do greetings from all of Southern Illinois Ecclesiastic Jurisdiction. And we want you to know that we do love you, amen. We're praying for you, and I know that you know Anything you need, you can call on us, and we will be here for you. God bless you. Let the church say amen. If you love the Lord, wave at somebody. Tell them I love the Lord. And you too, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. I went to Chicago, Illinois when I was 26 years old to Greater Holy Temple Church of God in Christ on the, on the west side. Uh, this is for all the crumbs. I met Mama Crumb and Deacon Crumb. If anybody, I know Mother Tucker loves me. I know, I know Mother, that beautiful Mo, Mosley loves me. God bless your husband. These two people, Dad Crumb and Mother Crumb, they love Gloria, Joy, Tammy, Richie. 
I preached there so long, they gave me an anniversary. <laughs> 30 years, Greater Holy Temple, and Mother Crumb and Dad Crumb gave thousands of dollars for my family to go to Spelman Clark, West Georgia. You all want me to tell it? <laughs> so, Selena and Mark, they call me Uncle Bishop. <laughs> they just love me, the bald head scar in the back. My ears are kind of stopped up when Mark told me he wanted me to sing Uncle James' song. I've had some good days. Well, Peyton, I've had some hills to climb. Anybody else? I've had some weary days. God bless me. And some dark nights, Tina. But when I look around, think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't, I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask the question why? Why, why so much pain? He knows what's best for me. Although my weary, weary eyes can't see. Them Chicago people right there. So I'll say, thank you, Lord. Bishop Payton, so I'll say, thank you, Lord. Dr. Payton, so I'll say, thank you, Lord. Dr. Martin, I won't, I won't complain. Now they tell me the dead don't know nothing, but that's what they said. I talked to Mother Crumb. If you don't think I love her, I could be soaking wet preaching and Dad Crumb walk right up on the platform with a towel, wiping me down crying and speaking in tongues. It was old saints had love. They just love you. They just love you. I talked to Mother Crumb. I called Mark. I said, where are you, Mark? He said, I'm in New York buying a dress for my mama. <laughs> Talk to Selena. You, you better be here. I said, I'm in town. I'm coming. My ears are stopped up, but I'm coming. <laughs> For 30 years plus, when they moved here, they came to Gospel Temple. There'd never been a problem anywhere. They went to church. I said, Mother Crumb, the other morning, where's your pain? She said, gone. <laughs> where's your medicine? Gone. <laughs> Where are your prescriptions? They're all gone. And then I asked her this morning, it looked like it was cloudy down here. I said, Mother, how's the weather up there? I dare you to open your mouth and tell somebody, everything is all right. All right. It's a land of unclouded days. Sleep on, Mom. Tell Dad I'm coming. I was 26 when I met you. I'm 78 now. I'm pressing on. I want to see you again. 
I want to congratulate these children for taking care of their mom. I was in New Jersey three weeks ago. My mother was 95, blind one eye, a little touch of dementia, but she can rattle off all them songs and poetry. Our gifts come through our parents and these young folks are a gift to the body of Christ. So everything is all right now. Not a pain, not a strain. She said, you ought to see me now. I got a glorified body. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God. Thank God for the saints. Listen, I understand uh, the Gaither family is going to um, come up and have remarks regarding mom. Thank you so much. After their remarks, we're going to have a musical selection by uh, Minister Kenneth Lowe. Good morning, family. For those that don't know me, my name is Laverne Gaither, and this is the Gaither family. And I just had to speak this morning uh, to let you all know that Sister Crom, my sister, she basically raised these two children right here. I just want you to know that. That's how much she became my family. Uh, she had this young man right here from six months to about three years old, and my husband and I both used to travel. And I just want to give a little praise about how she and her husband took care of us. Uh, we would be gone maybe two or three weeks or days at a time, me and my husband. She and her husband would take care of this young man and sometimes help him for the whole week. I would come home to pick him up. And he'd say, no, Mom, can I just stay a little bit longer? Can I just stay an hour more, a couple of days more? I said, Jerome, they've been with you all week. Time to go home. Sister Crumb said, if he want to stay, let him stay. Uh, the Mr. Crumb said, let him stay. Come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. You go home and get you some rest. Come back tomorrow. And I was introduced this, to this family by Eda. So I have been in this family for 29 years, and I just love her. And I tell you, we pray together. We pray for our family. And I don't know if you remember, Shalene, a little while ago, it's been a while, you called me up and you said, Mama wants to speak to you about something. I don't know what. But we sat in that house all day, and we prayed for our family. And I believe her prayer has kept me and my husband together. We've gone through some things, but I do want to say, and this is to whoever feels that it belongs to them, she prayed for her children. And she prayed that two of her children in particular would get along. She prayed that two of her children would be in, in agreement with each other, would love one another. And to whomever that applies to, I want you to take that because we pray for you. Just as I pray for my husband, we pray for her children. Please take that to heart. Please do that for her in the name of Jesus. Just pray for this family. I love you all. And I just thank you for allowing me to be a part of your family. Amen. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. 
to suffer with him. I know that I shall reign in his arms over there. In the land bright and fair, to live is Christ. Oh, Christ, and to die is gain. to suffer with him and to feel his pain to carry my cross is the reason why he came just to say my soul and to make me whole to live is Christ oh Christ and to die is his gain to gain my peace from the storms that tears my heart in to pieces little bitty pieces there no love can dwell
I'd like to see Peter. I'd like to see Paul. But somebody said, but when I see Jesus, all of my troubles, all of my heartaches, they'll all be over. Shout, yeah. I don't know about you all, but I'm living to live again. When I see Jesus. Don't do it, baby. Don't do it. Don't do it. They don't forget when and where to shout. But somebody ought to get happy because you living to live again. Hallelujah. This world is not my home. This is a troubled world, a world of war and confusion and racism and sexism and struggles and disappointments and heartaches and heartbreaks. But when I see Jesus, I wish I had some help yet. Paul said it like this. He said, I reckon that the sufferings of this world it's not even worthy to be compared. See, that's the way you do that. He didn't even have to have a cue. Somebody said, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Lord, help me in here. And all that he's done, that's the reason we bless him. And at the conference, I had what I called the senior corner. And I would tell the musicians, because sometimes the music be so fast that even I can't keep up. I would tell the musicians to slow it down so that the mamas could shout and dance and the seniors could get their praise in. And when they would slow it down, you would see folks like Mama Crumb scatting across the floor, giving them the best praise. They couldn't hook a buck like this generation, but they do that old one, two, across the floor. That's it, that, 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 that's the sound they like. And, and let me tell you, and I'm going, and I'm sorry, family, I have to leave. I moved my schedule so I could be here because mama loved me and I loved her. But what I'm afraid of in this generation is we are allowing the mothers and the fathers, the seniors, to die with the formulas. Somebody ought to think about that. If we don't sit under these mothers and elders,
and honor their mothers and stop pushing these sinks in the corner. I saw a young man the other day. He told me, he said, the mothers and the older, your older sinks, this is what he told me, need to move over. It's almost like leaving a bunch of teenagers at home by themselves. I wish I had some help here. But as long as I'm alive, I'm going to honor the mothers and fathers of the church. Because you ain't got that much where you would push the mothers and the seniors and the elders out of the way. Even if they got to sit in a chair and then part it. We better stop letting these old saints die with the formula. I wish I had some believers. That's a nugget right there. And so people like mother taught us the way and taught us how to love. I was a daughter of hers. And on Mother's Day, I would take a group of them to get their nails done. And I would leave there. They liked to go to Piccadilly. And we'd go to Piccadilly and we would dine together. I have no doubt that she loved me and I loved her and honored her. And I'm a very proud of children who honor their mothers. Is this mic still on? Children who disrespect mothers. Not only your day is going to be short, but there are certain blessings that fall on you because of how you honor your mother. I don't give a kitty if she's a stripper on Ashby Street. Is this mic still on, baby? That's still your mama. Folks don't know what it takes to carry a baby. Let me just tell you for 30 seconds, it stretches your body out of place. Every nerve in your body is suppressed. Before you can, when you eat the baby, eat first, whether you ask the baby to eat or not. Your body go through all kinds of things. I, I, and sometimes you don't even recover. You almost die to have a child. No wonder your mother would take anything she got and lay you out when you try to sass at her. I wish I had some help. If you got a living mother, you ought to thank God. I said you ought to thank God. My mother is 91 years old and I take care of her. There's nothing that I wouldn't do for her. She was had COVID and I was almost died of COVID in that hospital. But she was one of my reasons why I fought to live. Because I didn't want to leave my mother without be, having somebody to take care of her. And so if you got a mama, you ought to thank God for her. Treat her right. Tomorrow's Mother's Day. Don't come up with not now excuse. Because you knew last year that this day was coming. Somebody ought to say something to me. If you got that big bar or whatever you've been doing to come up with what you need, don't you break your mama's heart tomorrow. Talk good to me now. Be good to mama and be good to your spiritual mothers. Love on these mothers and stop letting them die with the formula. God bless you today. I'm leaving, but Pastor Dennis Martin has... All right. Pastor... Martin has agreed to take over for me and I'm so grateful to him. We are a team up here. This mic went out again, I guess. And I'm so thankful. I appreciate him. And the preacher, we got a great preacher among us today. But I'm going to call the family and um, they, they are on the program here. I want to say, I hope to God I'm going to say your name right. Abdul Rauf Muhammad. Tom Crum Jr., Ricky Crum, they are also sons, and Greeny Bynum Jr. and Rudy Bynum. They're all brothers. I want you to come in the fashion, in that fashion, please. And then the next voice you hear will be that of Pastor Dennis Martin. Thank you again, family, for asking me to be a part of this, this service. Greetings. In the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful, I thank Almighty God, Allah, for all of his prophets and the scriptures they brought. I thank him for Moses and the Old Testament. I thank him for David and the Psalms. 
I thank him for Solomon and Proverbs. I thank him for Jesus Christ, the gospel, and the New Testament. And I thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon all of these prophets of God. I am a student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Being a member of his staff, I called him to inform him of the passing of my beloved mother, Eloise Crump. He asked me to give condolences at this service from himself and his wife to my family and the loved ones of my be beloved mother, Eloise Crump. He said that he honors my mother for having raised a good son that has become a good helper to him and the nation of Islam. On December the 17th, 2019, he gave me the Muslim name, Abdul Rauf Muhammad. Abdul means servant of God. Rauf means compassionate and merciful. And Muhammad means praiseworthy. And to my wife, he gave the name Ra'afa, which is the feminine of Ra'uf. And I want to thank my mother, Eloise Crum, for instilling in me and helping to instill in me those qualities. Although mother Eloise Crum was my, not my biological mother, she raised me, cared for me, and nurtured me. My brother Walter, our sister Shirley, as her own, along with those that came after us, Ricky, Shirlina, Mark, and Keith. She was thoughtful of our needs and made sure we were always clean and sharp. She would always tell me, man, you sharp as a tack. Especially when we went to church every Sunday to hear the inspiring singing and preaching of Jesus Christ. She was a loyal woman, a faithful woman, a God-fearing woman who showered her husband, Tom Crum Sr., her family and friends with love. She raised a beautiful family, a loving family. She will be missed, but not forgotten. A scripture tells us the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He is the giver of life, and to him is our eventual return. May God receive you with open arms, Mama, a true and faithful servant of God. Thank you all for coming. Assalamu alaikum. God bless everyone, and uh, God bless the church. I know mom always talked about this church a lot, and it was in her heart. And it was so nice to see her come back here after being in Chicago many years and come back to her home in Atlanta and in her church home back here with you all. Uh, I'm Walter Crum one of her sons, and I'm, not, I'm just gonna say that people always said Mother Crum and Daddy Crum. And like the minister was saying earlier, 
a lot of times we lose those formulas. And the one formula that I remember, mom and dad, they always called each other mom and daddy. And that's a formula for a lot of these kids have lost, you know? They said they never called each other Tom or Elois. They called each other Mom and Daddy. And that's something we all have to remember, all right? But anyway, I just want to say God bless and thank you all. I came out of the script a little bit, but thank you all. Thank the church, and thank you all for receiving our mother, all right? <laughs> Elois Virginia Bynum Crum, my sister, mom, fond memories by Greg Green Jr., Morning Glory. The morning glory flower meaning depicts the essence of life and the shortness thereof. We are taught that our lives are to be lived by facing the light of the sun and to be in the brilliance of who we are. The morning glory symbolism is the, the brevity of life. Mother Eloise Virginia Bynum Crumb Morning Glory, my sister mom fond memories. Eloise or Lois or Sister Crumb, my sister mom, I pray strength through the words that you read here, you will get a glimpse of the close bond that Eloise and I shared. Words cannot express just how much I sh cherish the times we shared from my youth to the day she gained her heavenly wings. Below are just a few of the most vivid and fond memories that I have of my beautiful, loving sister mom. As I remember from the age of six years old, after our mom went home to glory, Elois and I, along with my other siblings, attended the Seven Days Adventist School on Ashby Street in Atlanta. I remember a young lady build, bu bullying Eloise and stuck her with bullying Eloise and stuck her with a pencil in her hand and lead of the pencil punctured and broke off in her hand. And the principal had to take his teeth to pull the lead out of Eloise's hand. After school, we would walk home from Ashby Street to 1571 Ezra Church Drive in Atlanta. On the way home, there was a pear tree on Hunter Street and Chapel Road. We would often make a stop there and eat pears as we walked home. This was in the Hunter Hill community. After our mom passed in 1948, Eloise took me under her arm. I was six, she was 15, nine years apart. Being young boys as my brothers and I were, working around the house and being mischievous, she would tell me, you better go out there and pull those ragweeds out of the garden before it gets hot. Another thing she would say, you better come into this house before the street lights come on. If, I, if my brother Harold and I were late when we came in the kitchen, she would be behind the back door with three stitches 
off the pear tree, excuse me, three switches off the pear tree, just waiting for us to come in and whip our butts. She didn't play, and the only thing we could do was cry. She would always say, you better not run, I will get you. Elois was a fast runner, and we knew she meant what she said. At the age of 15, I and my brothers had an Atlanta Journal paper route consisting of 163 customers for the evening paper. We also had to deliver Sunday morning paper. On many Sunday mornings, Elois would have to take Harold to get, Harold to get up to deliver Sunday morning's paper. We had a paper bill of over $30 per week. Elois loved gardening, both flowers and vegetables. She even had a rock garden when she was a teenager. Elois attended George Washington Carver Vocational School. While attending high school, Elois was a high-stepping majorette. After football season, she would walk to Auntie Her Hattie May's house in the Pittsburgh community. Elois had a job working for Coastline Railroad as a cook. When her supervisor, Mr. Hester, would get angry at Elois, she would put a dozen of eggs in the sweet potato pie. She and my sister, Marion Parks, both worked for the railroad. At the time, I was in high school. Once leaving the railroad, Elois received a job with Emory University Hospital in Decatur, Georgia. Elois purchased our home's first gas stove. After working for Emory, she moved to Chicago where she met and married Tom Crum in 1958. After I completed high school, I spent a summer in Chicago while we, tra while we traveled by train and we almost missed the, tra the training in Cincinnati, Ohio. Elois was carrying her wish trunk. I picked up her wish trunk and ran to the stairs and we were able to make the train from Cincinnati to Chicago. I spent the summer with Elois and Tom. After spending the summer in Chicago, I returned to Atlanta and was employed with the Davison Paxson Department Store, which is now known as Macy's, in 1960. After working with Davidson's, I joined the Army in 1961. After completing basic and advanced training, I journeyed back to Chicago. Elois had had her first baby boy, Ricky, in December of 1961. The weather was brutal. It was 10 degrees below. Zero. After leaving Chicago, I returned to my duty station in Fort Benning, Georgia. After re-enlistment and doing a tour of duty in Vietnam, South, Southeast Asia, Elois mailed to me a fruitcake and a two-pound packet of Black Eyed Peas. The packet of Black Eyed Peas almost started a riot in Vietnam. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed this treat. It was considered a delicacy in Vietnam. After serving my tour, I returned to stateside via Seattle, Washington. On my way to Georgia from Seattle, I took a delayed en route to Chicago. My sister mom made me my first home cooked meal in Chicago. The next morning, I made my way to Atlanta, Georgia. Elois had a, a CB handle called Morning Glory, and some of my CB friends would call her when traveling through Chicago. In 1995, Veterans Affairs wanted to do surgery on my heart. Elois was right by my side. I received a second opinion, and to this day, I have not had that surgery. I, I attribute this to God's grace and the prayers of my sister mom. Elois and I always had 5 a.m. morning conversations about life, about family, well-being, and always praising and thanking God for his goodness and blessings. Sister Crum, Elois Crum, my sister mom, Elois was a virtuous woman and living out Proverbs 31. She was a woman of dignity and grace with strength and spoke with wisdom. She took care of her family and her children as well as her siblings all called her blessed. I will always love and miss you. Rest in peace, Green Jr. God bless you. Thank you. 
have to leave for a minute. But I just want you to know that uh, I love my sister. I love my family. I love this church. I love the city which I grew up in. I just want you to know that it's all about love. It's all about love. God gave his only begotten son that we may be redeemed through the love of Christ. We thank you and we praise our Lord and our God for his love. It's all about love. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. If anybody remember that song, it's just Jesus. For he hung, suffered, bled, and died that we may be redeemed in Heavenly Father. Daddy, thank you, Lord. So help God, Heavenly Father. We help. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I might not have all the things that I need to do, but I'm striving to get there. I'm striving to be there. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all your many blessings, your kindness, your love, for your grace, and your mercy. I thank you for leaving me with a sister and five sisters. I had five mothers. I had five mothers. Lord's being in particular that helped raise me from my Lord to keep me to be the man that I am from 10 months old to where I am today. Oh, Lord, I thank you for my family for keeping me to be able to be a, a husband, a father, and a man to strive and go on in the name of Jesus. I thank you and I praise you. I praise you, dear Lord, for having my sister Lord. Lord. She she before she went to her crumb family in Chicago. She helped to stimulate stimulate to, to care for our family and to bring us close and, and, and to net, keep us netted together with love and, and understanding for one another. I just want to say thank God for me having a family and a sister that was caring and loving because it's all about love. I don't know if you really believe it, but it's all about love. Love is caring, dedication, sacrifice. My sister sacrificed for my family. And she neglected herself that she would sacrifice that we may be able to live in a dedicated way. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Lord. There's a lot that I should say and that I could, 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 could elaborate on. But all I want you to know and everyone to know that my sister always had love in her heart. Always had, from a young person, from a very young person, she always had love in her heart. So I leave it, this with you. It's all about love. It's all about love. And when you when you can show your your family, your friends, your loved ones, when you can, the love is in your heart. Praise God.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and let's give him a hand of praise. Well, it's word time. And today our eulogist is the superintendent, Kenneth Payton. He's the pastor of the Living Word Church of God in Christ. He's an administrative assistant to in South Central Georgia jurisdiction. And he's going to bring and share with us the word today after the lady, LeVette Brown Sims, comes with the sermonic selection. The next speaking voice you will hear after the selection will be that of Superintendent Payton. I'm going to ask you, in respect for the minister, once he comes to please stand, and he will give us further direction. Amen. The bishop. Amen. We praise God for our Mother Crom. Amen. We've been knowing Mother Crom and the family since we were children, babies. And I tell you, I feel like I am a biological daughter. We go way back on, from 16th and Pulaski on the west side. Amen. And I just want you all to know that we are praying much for you. Ricky, Mark, Shalina. Tom Jr., uh, Walter, all of the children, amen. We are with you. Every time mother went to the hospital and Mark sent me a text, amen, I got on the highway and came to the hospital, Shalina, and held hands with and prayed for her, amen. So we love her, amen, but we know she's in a better place, amen. So we're just going to sing the song. Brother Mark requested, pray for me that I don't forget these words, amen, but it is a powerful song, amen. Somewhere in out of space, God has prepared a place, and it's for them who will trust him and obey and although we may not know when Jesus is coming back again and the countdown is getting lower every day. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, and four. Call upon the Lord while he's near. Three, two, and one. Don't get caught with your work undone. For the countdown is getting lower every day. Oh, I want to see him to look upon his face. There to sing forever. Love is safe and great. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home and land. Oh, 
It's for us who will trust him. We got to trust him and obey. See, some of us have been out of the will of God, but it's time for us to get back in the will. It's time for us to get back in the will. But although we don't know when, Jesus is coming back again. And the countdown is getting. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Would you remain standing with me, everybody except the family. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I come now to speak a word to your people. And I pray, God, now that you will give me clarity of thought, simplicity of speech, that I can convey what you have placed in my spirit. I pray while I'm standing here, God, I pray for Bishop Mosley. I pray, God, that you would touch his body. We believe, we, we, we stand on your word that with your stripes we are healed. And so there's no ailment, no condition, no infirmity, no disease, no sickness that's too hard for you. If we can have it, you can heal it. And so, God, we ask you now to touch his body. God, as I stand here, don't let them see me, but let them see you. And even as I speak, don't let them hear me, but let them hear you. It is my sincere prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you just put your hands together right there? And you may be seated. We love the Lord today. We give honor to him who is the bishop of my soul. We praise God for all of you who are here today. I'm sort of pinch hitting for Bishop Mosley. I certainly honor him in his absence. Lady Mosley, I certainly honor you. God bless you all. Bishop White, Bishop Payton, administrative assistant, Marge, and all of you all. We praise God for you to this family of which I we are really a part, you know, we, we grew up, we, we are part of this family, and so we are praying for you. I see Sister Shirley Clements, God bless you, Mother Tucker, all of you all, we love y'all so much. Y'all, this is home for us. This is home for us. We grew up, Brenda, we grew up at 591 Jones Avenue, and so y'all know me. I was a boy then, but now I'm a bald-headed man, you know, but I'm Sister Tina, I'm, I'm, you know, this is me. All right, um, I won't be long. I won't be long. They did tell me that you were trying to be out by 1230, so that means I have a lot of time. <laughs> Y'all will catch that after a while. Y'all will catch it. All right. Um, First Timothy. I'll honor my wife. She's not here, but I'll honor my wife of 48 years. It'll be 49 years in July. And... Um, I always like to honor her because she's praying for me even now. 2 Timothy 1 and 5. 2 Timothy 1 and 5. And I'm going to read this one verse and we will try to expound on it to see if we can offer some encouragement and to see what we can glean from this text. The word of the Lord says, When I call to remembrance... The unfranged faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, 
and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that it is in thee also. I want to talk just for a moment remembering a great woman of God. Remembering a great woman of God. Thank you for that selection. You blessed me. All of y'all. It was great. I understand that this particular passage of scripture is not one that is usually used when you are doing a eulogy. I recognize that. But there was something uh, Lady Canyon said when before she left that we needed to make sure that we don't leave our seniors out. We don't leave the format with the seniors. And our text helped us in a particular way, a unique way, to let us know that the grandmother and the mother played a significant role in Timothy's life. And so I want to talk for this subject just for a moment, remembering a great woman of God. Now, now the truth of the matter, and I'm almost through because I know we got to go. The truth of the matter is all of us are going to be remembered for something. Uh, whether it's good or bad, you're going to be remembered for something. Some of us are going to be remembered for being troublemakers. Some of us are going to be remembered for being gossipers. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Some of us are going to be remembered for being busybodies. Some of us are going to be remembered for being liars and cheaters and deceivers and, and all of those things. We are going to be remembered for something. But it is always nice to be remembered for something good. It is always good to be remembered uh, for that holy lifestyle, that that lifestyle that was spotless. I, I heard all of you coming up speaking about Sister Lord's, Mother Lord's life, and, and all of it was consistent in the way she lived. Nobody got up and said, well, I don't know why they said that, because I knew her to be. No, no, everybody knew her to be this woman of God. And I believe that if we are to make it in, there is something that we need to glean from this woman. There is something that we need to take away from here so that when it's our time, somebody can say something about us that will say, you know what, he was a man of God. She was a woman of God. The text here, the text, the text. Paul is talking to Timothy, and we know that Timothy now is the, uh, he's been mentored by Paul. He's taken Paul's place, and, and, and so now Paul is in that teaching moment, and he's given him some information. He said, now I call to remember your unfeigned faith. I'm remembering how you are, but it did not start with you. I'm glad you're faithful, Timothy. I'm glad you're faithful. I'm glad that you're living holy. I'm glad that you're saved, sanctified in our 21st century vernacular, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm glad you're living that life, but it did not start with you. Uh, it, it started with, it started with your, your grandmother, Lois. Isn't it interesting that, that Lois' name is used here today? Isn't it, isn't it wonderful that we can actually relate this Bishop White? Well, well, well Lois, the grandmother, taught Eunice, and Eunice taught Paul, I mean taught Paul, taught Timothy, how to live this life, how to be holy, how to live in such a way that he could be a, a, an example to the believers. Again, all of us are being remembered for something. All of us are being remembered for, for, for how we're living right now. What, what are we doing to impact society? What are we doing to impact the church? What are we doing to impact our families? 
What are we doing to, in, in the sight of God that would, that would have him to say, when that time comes, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. And so then Paul is talking to Timothy and said, I remember. And, and listen how he remembered. He said, I remember uh, the unfeigned faith. Now this word unfeigned faith has to do with a sincere faith. A genuine faith. Y'all let me do it just for a moment. It's a faith that does not include hypocrisy. It's a faith that does not include the stuff. It's a faith that only looks at God for who he is. It's this unfeigned faith, this sincere faith, this holy faith, this genuine faith, but it didn't start with you. It started with your grandmother. And it was passed on to your mother. Can y'all hear it? Can y'all see the family? Can y'all hear see the connection? Mom left us something. Now what are we going to do with it? Mom gave us a way to live. So what are we going to do with it? Are we going to dismiss it now? Or are we going to take up the mantle? Or are we going to say, you know, I hear what they said about mom. I hear what they said about my sister. I heard what they said about how she lived. Now is our time to take up the torch. And so although we are hurting, we are mourning, we are crying, and it's rightfully so. I understand that although we're in this place, it is comforting to know that we are remembering a woman who loved God. It is comforting to know that we are remembering somebody who was not a hypocrite. It is comforting to know that we are remembering somebody who lived holy. My mom died in 1995, June 9th, 1995. And we were close to mom. We, all of us, we were close to our mom. And, and I, was, I was, all of us were mourning. And, and, and in my mourning time, God came to me and gave me 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. And it says, if we have hope in this life only, we are of all men most miserable. And Selena, what the Lord was telling me there was that everybody don't make it in. Y'all hear me? Everybody, listen, God was telling me, your mama made it in. This is what we preach. This is what we teach. If we have hope in this life only, if you just got money here, if you just got a big house here, if you just wear decent clothes here, if you just got a good job here, really you're miserable. That's what he's saying. You, you're just miserable because after this, there's a greater life. I heard, I heard Mother Lady Ken, uh, Kenya say, we're living to live again. We're living because after a while, this, it will all be over. After a while, there will be no more crying, no more dying, no more pain, no more sickness. After a while, we'll be able to be with our Lord. But it starts now how we live right now. How we're faring right now. What we're doing right now. All right, so as I close, didn't start with you, Timothy. It started with Grandma. Grandmama taught mama, and mama taught you. Told your mama, my mom died in 95, but look what we have. From that, we have a bishop. From that, you have a doctor of theology. From that, you have a missionary. From that, you have a deacon. Uh, Did y'all hear what I'm saying? It's like, it didn't start with us. It starts with the training that we receive. We got a seasoned saint. My, my other sister Rita don't care the title. She bootlegs a lot of time, but she don't care. 
But she's a seasoned saint. She's the mother of the church. She, she's the mother of the, of the church. But it didn't start with her. Daddy and mother didn't leave us a lot of money, but they left us Jesus. Maybe she didn't leave y'all a lot of money. Maybe she didn't leave you a lot of material stuff, but she left you Jesus. And when she left you Jesus, that's enough to carry us on. That's enough to see us through. That's enough to make us feel like we can make it through the mar to the morrow. And even when we're quiet, even when we mourn, even when, when the crowd die down and, and people go about their own business, we will still have that thing in our life that Jesus is with us because mama left us Jesus. She left us somebody we could call on when we can't call on nobody else. She left us somebody we can look to who is the author and finisher of our faith. And so today, as I get ready to sit down, huh, I'm thanking God huh, for the God she served. Huh, because the God Mother Crumb served huh, is the same God I serve. Huh, it's the same God you serve. Huh, and so today, huh, when we get ready to get out of here, huh, cry if you must. Huh, do what you got to do huh, to grieve your loss. Huh, but then look to the hills uh, from which comes your help uh, because all of your help uh, it comes from the Lord uh, and I'm here to tell you uh, that God uh, he will see you through uh, God uh, he will get you through this uh, God uh, he will never leave you uh, or forsake you uh, he will do it uh, I'm leaving here uh, but there is a scripture uh, I want to leave in your hearing uh, from the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation 14 uh, and 13. Uh, it says here, uh, blessed are the dead uh, who die in the Lord uh, from henceforth. Uh, yea, says the Lord, uh, that they may rest uh, from their labor uh, and their works uh, do follow them. Uh, now, y'all. Uh, it's time for us uh, to pick up the mantle. Uh, let her work uh, follow you. Uh, she's resting now uh, from her labor. Uh, she has done uh, what the Lord told her to do. Uh, she has lived uh, the way God told her to live. Uh, and so now uh, she's taking her rest. Uh, she has gone on uh, to be with the Lord. Uh, this is what I say, y'all, uh, as I get ready to sit down. Uh, sometimes uh, God uh, would take the sickness uh, from the person, uh, but other times uh, he would take the person uh, from the sickness. Uh, but either way, uh, they are healed. Uh, they are delivered. Uh, they are set free. Uh, thank God uh, for his deliverance. Woo! Thank God she's no more in pain. Thank God she can remember now. Thank God she's ready. She was ready to go meet the Lord. Selena told me the last thing Mama told her before she died. I'm trying on my long white robe. Do you have one? I need to leave you with this. Do you have one? If you don't have one, you need to check yourself. Because after a while, after a while, we're going to have to get out of here. And I saw a number. The Bible says, in the, I got the preach now. The Bible says, in the book of Revelation, I saw a number that no man could number and they asked the question who are they and the answer was these are they who hear oh my god these are they that bear their burden in the heat of the day these are they that went through trials and tribulation Woo! these are they thank god She's one of them, and after a 
your while. When it's all said and done, we are going up to meet him. I'm through. I'm going to my seat. But as I go to my seat, let me tell you, as the songwriter says, one day, one day, I'm going to be with the Lord. And I'll be caught up. I'll be caught up. Woo! When that first trumpet sound, we're going to get up out of the ground. The mother picked it up and said, can't no grave hold my body down. The Bible says when that trump sound, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And them who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. Yeah. I'm through. At this time, Woo! Set them up, Shandera. But right before the acknowledgement, if there's somebody in here who's not saved, you don't know him as your personal savior. I mean no disrespect to anybody. But the Bible tells us there's no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved other than the name of Jesus. So if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, wherever you are, would you just lift your hands and just repeat this after me if you want to be saved? Say, Lord, I am so sorry for the life that I have lived and I repent from all of my sins and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe with my heart that he died was buried and was resurrected just for me and so today, I make a conscious decision to accept him as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Mark, love you. Shalina, love you. Green, Rudy, all of y'all, we love y'all so much. God bless you. At this time, we're going to have the acknowledgement from Dr. Maddie Belock. But before Dr. Locke comes, we're going to have Dr. Williams. precious family. We are here today because a precious woman has gone on to meet the Lord. Who can find, Proverbs says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So we know that this was a precious woman and her price was far above rubies. We loved her because she loved us. Each and every one of us, she had a smile for you. She had encouraging words for you. And I want you to know that I believe that she's going to meet the king. But I have a lot of resolutions for this, our precious sister, in memory of Mother Elois Crum. To the family of Mother Elois Crum, our heartfelt condolences go out to you. 
we miss the presence of our dear mother Eloise Crum. She was truly a lovable and kind woman of God. May the memories held inside your heart help to comfort you. You are in our thoughts and prayers. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto thee that of a broken heart and saveth such as thee. Sincerely, Cathedral of Faith Mother's Board, Mother Lula Robinson, President, Bishop Arthur F. Moses, Pastor. Millinery Temple, Cozy, Church of God in Christ. Is this uh, 801 Blair Avenue, Alton, Illinois? Pastor Dr. J. Michael Porter. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, and I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41.10. To the family of Mother Elois Crumb, we, the members of the Millinery Milliton Temple Church of God in Christ, do express our deepest heartfelt sympathy during this, your hour of bereavement. In the passing of your loved one, Mother Crumb was a truly a jewel that will be brightened up in heaven when the rapture, in the rapture. God has given us yet a little while to complete a lifelong journey time to eternity. We are all, we are all just passing through this old world, and it is not our home. We are completing the circle of life, both naturally and spiritually. Death once began has come as it is appointed, and now to complete the cycle of life that God has ordained, and now the resurrection awaits those whose life was dedicated unto the Lord. We should magnify the name of the Lord and work while it's day. For night cometh, and no man can work. The prince and ruler of darkness may have captured a battle, but victory still belongs to the Lord. We are all knowing <coughs> and wise. God, our Savior, who does all things well. He will comfort you when you need him most. He will be a mother for the motherless and a father for the fatherless. He will wipe away all tears from your eyes. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The members are here to help you through these tough days that lie ahead. If you need anything, a shoulder to lean on, a simple ear to listen, or just a friend to talk, to remember we are just a phone call and a prayer way. Don't hesitate to call. Done by the order of Reverend Dr. J. Michael Porter, Sr., Pastor. Missionary Alberta Porter, Jurisdictional Supervisor, Disney, Southern Illinois Ecclesiastic Jurisdiction. Resolution in loving memory of Mother Eloise and Mother. We, the members of the Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ, Atlanta, Georgia, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we have we bid goodbye to our beloved mother, sister, and friend, Mother Eloise Crumb, and whereas. Mother Crumb was born October the 25th, 1933 in Atlanta, Georgia, to Greeny and Viola Bynum. She accepted the Lord and professed a hope in Christ at, our, at an early age. Mother Eloise Crumb served faithfully as an active member of the Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ from 1998 until her passing. And whereas Mother Crumb had from this life on 
April the 27th, 2022. And whereas Mother Crum was a dear soul to live <coughs> the Lord, to love the Lord, and was a very loyal and faithful individual who served in the ministry well. Mother Crum was known for her service to the Mother's Board Hospitality Ministry as well as the senior choir. And whereas not only is this a loss of a devoted woman of God, but a compassionate soul who was involved in the ministry of help by being a strong supporter to those in need. And whereas the passion of our beloved mother is the will of God, there is a human tie that has been broken that bleeds and leaves our heart in pain. But nevertheless, we are encouraged and consoled by the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And therefore, be it resolved that we, the Cathedral of Faith, Church of God in Christ, members embrace the family because of that common bond, which will connect us for the rest of our lives, Mother Crumb can never be the same, and we will never forget this strong woman who influenced the lives of so many. And the family of Mother Dolores Crumb, we miss your loss this week, and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. More importantly, we recognize that that this loss is heaven's gain, humbly submitted on the seventh day of May, 2022. The pastor, officer, and members of the Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ, Atlanta, Georgia, Bishop Arthur F. Mosley. of you and the only thing that you have to do is just trust him put your trust in him be not dismayed whatever be tired God will take care of you we know that we know that we know that and in all of these um, resolutions we know that she was loved this is a lot saying and we want to Think about the family who's been Mark and Selena. You all have been in, have been yoked me, okay? And we're going to do what is best for this our family at this time. So we can't read all of these. So we will give them to the family for them to read at a later date, okay? And so Thank I you, Dr. That Lott. That the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, I don't know about the, the prayer thing. Uh, uh, but the bishop and the minister of God gives us to do, and we, we want to obey, okay? We want to obey. And as I say, the word on the street is... God bless you. Paul Bearers.
God bless you all to this family. Mother was a great woman. And if there are some takeaways, the one takeaway is what the Bible teaches us. But mother taught you all, trust in the Lord, rely on God, lean on him. Know that he will be your keeper. He will be your provider. He will be your comforter. We will commit the body inside. For as much as it has pleased the almighty God, please, those of you, stand, accept the family. For as much as it has pleased the almighty God to take out of this world our dear deceased mother, Crumb, we commit her body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be made changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. If you would please repeat after me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here is our benediction. I, I've heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Lord, that, their la that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. Excuse me, benediction. Now may the grace of God of peace, who brought from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, and the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal Jesus, equip you all to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing 